And with all of that being said, let's welcome Jordan Fields, owner of Simo Art to the stage. Uh, good morning everyone thank you for attending today i am super excited to be here and i have a month's worth of business experience so <laughs> if you're wondering what are you doing up there <laughs> um two main reasons one i really like to talk and two i'm an overshare so um both of those things have worked out greatly in my favor as i have started my business um so that is why I jumped at this opportunity this morning. Um, as Sydney said, my name is Jordan Fields. Sorry, okay, there we go. And I think it's important for you to know a little bit about me. Um, currently, I am an art teacher at Horseman Elementary. I've been there for seven full school years, going into my eighth year. Um, I'm a graduate of Smith Cotton High School. I attended State Fair Community College and then I transferred to the University of Central Missouri, where I earned my bachelor's degree in art education with an emphasis in printmaking. Um, I'm very, very passionate about art education, and I've actually completed my first year of the master's program at the University of Missouri, where I'm doing learning, teaching curriculum in art education with an emphasis in art therapy. So I have spent much of my life looking forward to the summer because I'm still on that kid's schedule, that school schedule where summer rules. And I've spent many summers doing random jobs, uh, waitressing, retail. Some of them have carried over, sometimes more than one at a time. And so last summer I was looking for a job and I was like, I don't know what I wanna do. I have three kids now. Um, I have a stepdaughter and two little boys at home, keep me very busy. And so I know another entrepreneur type person and they own a farm, Roop Family Farms, if you've ever heard of them. And so I was like, um, I'm not really a farmer, but what do you got that I can do? And so she's like, you can pick for us or um, I learned how to build like garden beds and all of this stuff. And so it was really neat. It was very eye-opening um, and it was incredibly healing for my mind to be outside and do this thing that I've never done before. But I knew that I wasn't gonna farm every summer. So I needed to figure out what was gonna start taking place of that. So um, the local art teachers and I, every time we get together, we're like, oh, somebody should do something. Like we should have like this art studio or we should have this get together or this group. And so I was like, listen, if you guys aren't gonna run for it, I am. And they're like, yeah, we're not. So, so I contacted Kelly Asbury and Sydney Kavnis and we were like, came together and I realized these are like two incredible resources. So I'm working on the farm, I'm working with them to create my business plan and kind of figure out which direction I'm gonna go. And then um, August came, last August, School year starts, I'm into my master's program, and I'm like, ah, I don't have time for this. So I tabled the idea and just decided that the time wasn't right. Um, and then the end of the school year comes around, and sorry, I can't remember what my next slide looks like. Okay, I'm still, I'm still on me. Um, <laughs> and I was talking to my instructional coach, Hillary, who's here today, thank you. And she's like, what are you gonna do this summer? And I was like, don't really know but I'm gonna keep working on my business plan like I'm gonna light that back up and she's like okay um, I think I know someone who may have space for you and I was like okay so I went and met with Justin Hubs who's also here thank you Justin and he's like hey I think this space would work for you so I look at the space I fall in love and I'm like okay I have like a month to get this together so I email Kelly talk to Sydney talk to Justin and we're like, yeah, we can do this. It's going to be great. So here we are. Um, SEMO Art Studio is a place where artists of any age can come to learn, explore, and create. 
Right now, the focus has been on kids because that's what I'm good at, that's what I know. But as we expand, I want it to be just completely universal. Whoever is interested or willing can come um, and check it out. These are just a couple of the photos from um, our sessions that we've had so far, which have been just magical. I've had the best groups of kids come in. Um, CMO Art Studio is like the leg of the race that took off first for me. So when I started talking to Kelly about my business plan, I was like, what we need is a group for artisans in our community. It's a network. And so my big, big idea was that I would have this membership idea and included in the membership would be like different gallery shows and you would have these opportunities and ways to network and people could reach out and say, hey, I'm looking for a muralist or I want to commission someone. Do you have them on your list? And I could say yes. And then inside of Central Missouri Artisans, we would have this studio space where people could come and create and then grow to have gallery and retail. Um, so the studio took off first, but I haven't tabled the other two ideas. They're just part of the growing plan. Right now, like I said, we've focused a lot on the summer studio for the kids, but I have been working on um, open studio times, doing parties and gatherings, um, I'm making plans for a maker's market so that people in our community who are doing handmade things can come together. Um, in the fall, I plan on offering art clubs, so different local art teachers will be um, helping me host those. And then I've been reaching out to different artists for talks and workshops. I am incredibly proud to be from Sedalia, and I just think highly of all of my educational experiences here and in this area. So I really want to be involved um, in that community and be a resource for people who are maybe are looking to get into education or, or who feel like there's a gap in their education because that's one of the main things that I think the studio can do for people is to fill those gaps. So if you're in sixth grade and you don't have room for art in your schedule, you can come to the studio for a little bit. If you're graduating from State Fair and you're like me and you're gonna be an artist and you're gonna make all this money, <laughs> then I could be your reality check or I could be a resource that says yes you are. It can, it can go either way. Um, but just to help people kind of in their journey, um, but also reaching those that who just need to be creative just for the sake of being creative. You don't have to love art or have a big box of supplies at home just to come and do something that frees your mind. I'm gonna double check my notes, I'm sorry. Okay, so really that's the whole spiel. I just wanna fill the gap in our community. There are you know places you can play basketball and go to soccer lessons and swim, but there's very few opportunities for kids or even adults to create art and foster that passion. So that's where Sumo Art Studio has come from. That's the direction we're going. And thank you for listening to me this morning. Yes. <coughs> where are you located? 1501 South Grand. Okay. So it's a nice location, pretty central, I feel like, um, and kind of on the path of people going different places. So do you have set open hours right now where people can just pop in and out or do you have sessions that people sign up for? So right now the kids sessions are nine to noon and one to four Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to open up that Friday because a lot of people travel or they're going on vacation. So I didn't want to make people commit to that, but I'd like to open up the Friday to where, hey, this is the time that you can come in um, there may be like basic supplies on the table, there may be project ideas out, or bring what you need to work on what you have and hang out for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna just go behind you and then I'll come forward. So would you have like the capacity or room, like, let's say if a business or organization wanted to do like team building, like would you be able to like put together like a class of some sort, whether it's like painting, you know, play or anything along those lines? Yes, but it is a smaller space. So like 12 to 15 is kind of where I'm at. Um, and I have 
looked at that a little bit with taking the art therapy courses through MU. And then um, at my last spring conference, we did something kind of similar to that. And so I thought that would be like another, you know, idea. Like that's can be a very opening experience. And like you said, team building. Um, I have done it for my teachers at school. Like I posted little after school, like come and make and stuff. And they always end up really well because it just opens you up when you're creating. When your hands are busy, then you can keep talking. So, okay. <clears throat> Will you ever uh, dabble in the realm of digital art, such as photography, graphic design, illustration? Yes. I um, actually have reached out to a couple people that I went to UCM with because that is not my forte whatsoever at all. But I know it's important and it's a very big and growing field. So I have reached out to someone just to kind of get my feet wet in that aspect um, and see like equipment wise, what would be needed. And like I said, I don't know, know very much about that. So just learning and um, trying to make that connection with people so that I can provide that service because I do think it's important. I do a little bit like in my own personal classroom, but I know it's not as comparable as if like that's your passion and that's where you're going to go to school for. What is your website or your Facebook page? Okay, so the Facebook page is Simo um, Art Studio. No dashes. No dashes. Mm -hmm. And then the web page falls under the same thing. It's kind of um, a little bit longer because it's a Google web page. So my domain has Google at the beginning, but it ends in Simo Art Studio. I promise if you Google me, I'm there. I am Google certified. As Simo. Yep. Yes. So I've been to like the paint the town yes. type of things. Like, is that something that you're interested in, like collaborating in to have them or someone like them come in and run like a paint, you know, session with people? Yes. So I have been in contact with a few people who do those kinds of things. Um, so they could essentially like pay a fee, use the studio space, and do that there. Um, which I like that aspect of the business because that helps that person. It gives them another venue because sometimes I feel like the same venues are used for those and they're not always everyone's cup of tea, if that makes sense. Yes. Did you mention you do art therapy, like going through courses right now for that? Okay, say it one more time. Art, art therapy, do you, are you going through that courses for, for that right now? Yes. Have you ever thought about doing art therapy for better? Have you ever looked into that before? Heard of that before? I've, I've been. I've actually hired someone in my previous college to do art therapy for our veterans. So uh, you and I could talk. I'd love to talk to you offline about it. But okay. I don't yes. Know what the option. It, <laughs> yes. So that is um, another aspect that I'm exploring because my masters won't truly be like solely in art therapy. I don't want to put it out there as like I'm a certified art therapist because I'm I'm not going to be at the end of it. But I would like to focus in on that aspect for people and give them that resource. I know that I can guide people through some basic activities, but something like that, like I do think is necessary and needed in the community. So yes, I would love to learn more about it. Yes. I'm sorry, could you explain maybe what Paint the Town is and, and or if you were doing team building, would you do it on site somewhere else for a larger group? Okay, so Paint the Town is where you pay a small fee you go in, they provide all the paint, canvases, easels, everything you need. There's usually adult drinks involved, not always. And you hang out and someone guides you through a painting. So everyone's painting is gonna look fairly similar and they heavily advertise what you're getting into. So like right now, 4th of July, it might be like a red truck with big fireworks in the back or whatever. And there's lots of different entities that do that, but Paint the Town is like the brand name. Okay, and then team building off site. Team building. I would not be opposed to team building off site. So I know um, if you guys follow the Funky <laughs> Pot, they're another person in town. I just did like a party with her that was very fun, and I know she comes to you. So I kind of talked to her about that. Like, what does that look like? How do you pack it all up? How do you know what you're doing? Um, she was incredibly open and helpful, but I think that would be um, really interesting, especially if it was a larger group, like a space like this. You could definitely fit more people in. Um, so I wouldn't be opposed to traveling to or having them come to me, either way. 
Yes, Sydney. So the sessions that you have for kiddos, is there a place people can go to sign up for those, or how do they, how do they get in contact with you for that? Okay, so I flood Facebook all the time with <laughs> um, the sign-up link, but then also through the website, everything is Google for me because it's the way my brain works now. The school system, so W200, has been Google for like five years, I think, so I just ran with Google because it's the calendar I know how to use, the email, all of the documentation, everything. So um, it's a really simple Google form, and there's even buttons now on my website where you can just pay online. <laughs> yes? So what is your most critical need right now? My most critical need right now is probably... Um, I guess advertising and getting the classes full, like getting people yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pushing it. I know tons of people are pushing it, but just continually like letting people know. And then um, if I could duplicate myself, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> no, just focusing in on like, like get, keeping the, the website updated or making sure that I'm making Facebook posts or like... When I look at something, it may be really clear to me because it's my thoughts, my ideas, but then someone else gets on the website and they're like, hey, I can't find this or I don't see this. So I've been really lucky in that aspect that I have people who will be like, hey, your link's not working or, you know, this is the question I have. You didn't put it on there. My mom's always checking my Facebook posts. You didn't put the date. You didn't put the cost. Are you going to update? Oh, like, yes, yes, I'll get there. So, yes. Do you have any idea how uh, your hours of operation will work after the school year starts? Will it be a relief valve for parents to send their kids over, or will it be weekends? So that is my, my big, big focus right now because I am committed to teaching for the next school year. I definitely will have evenings open. That was easy to line up weekends, and I have several people that I'm talking to that have daytime availability so that hopefully people who want to come in during the day can come in there. Um, I've even kind of been poking around in the homeschool community just to give them a space because not everyone wants to get messy at their home. So then they could potentially also have that space to use. So um, I kind of think of the the business model is like the summer, it's like like I live at the lake. Like the summer is gonna be like the time I have to dedicate and really be there. And whatever comes in during the summer is gonna have to kind of float me <laughs> through. Um, but I am hopeful that I'll just keep connecting with people and finding the people that can be there for me when I can't. Um, so far it's it's working. So I don't, I don't want the, the school year to start and it just to fizzle out. That's kind of a fear of mine, but at the same time, um, I'm being realistic with myself, and so I knew what I was doing when I started the business, and I'm just going to have to ride it out. Yes? So you talked about serving as a resource for members of the community if they're looking for this coalition of artists, but have you thought about also offering artist support and like paint and sips for universities? Because I work also within the Office of Student Activities at UCM, and that's a really big thing is we like to have paint and sips or crafting nights, but whenever you do the same painting every time, it starts to be a little dull. Um, have you thought about that at all? Um, honestly, no. I didn't really know that was a need. I do still talk to Rahila Weed, Dr. Weed, a lot, and so I did plan on reaching out to her just as the school year kicks off and say, like, <clears throat> you know, whatever you think your students may need, I'm happy to help them. I have done um, like first year teacher talks with her before, just coming in and talking to the students. So, I mean, if that's a need, I would be happy to fill it. That's very exciting. Yes. I hate to cut off this conversation, no, no. Uh, but uh, we are kind of wrapping up our time here. So, I guess my ending question, um, I'll, I can ask you like I ask everybody, what can we do as a community to help? Um, just keep telling your friends, uh, keep flooding my inbox with ideas. I'm super flexible. Uh, I love to hear what other people think. And um, if you can't come to something, you can hopefully come another time. Pretty good. Shocking.